You know, if you've been following my work for a while, you know that I'm an absolute nerd when it comes to insulation and best practices for getting an efficient house. On the build show today, I'm going to be specifically talking about remodeling. I've got a house behind me that I'm actually doing a remodel on, and I'm using this house as a test case. This is a 1970s house. Very uncomfortable, a lot of room for improvement on the house. And on the build show today, we're going to call this insulation 2.0. You know, most people that have a house like this, they think, well, I need to add some insulation to my attic, but is that really gonna solve the problem? Is that gonna lower their energy bills and make them more comfortable? Maybe, maybe not. So here's the theory, insulation 2.0. It's really not just about insulation. There's a second component that's just as important. In fact, maybe more important than the insulation itself. Now here's the theory. When you've got these issues, what do you do? You call an insulation contractor. They come in and give you a bid for adding, let's say, 12 more inches of insulation in your attic. But that doesn't always address the root cause or the root problems. Here's an analogy for you. If you were going skiing and I was naked and needed something to keep me warm as I'm shushing down the slopes, would I just put on a sweater? What would happen if I just had a sweater on and that was it? That air as I'm going down the slopes would penetrate my insulation and would make me cold even though I had a really good sweater on. Would it help if I added a second sweater? No, what would help is if I put a Gore-Tex jacket on the outside. Why would that help? Because it's gonna stop the airflow through. I don't need actually a ton of insulation if I've got a Gore-Tex jacket on that's stopping the wind flow through my sweater. And that's exactly what our houses need. We need an air barrier on our houses to make sure the air can't just flow through the insulation and move that energy through our houses. All right, so insulation 2.0, let's get into it. There's really three steps. On this house behind me, this is a 1970s house. It doesn't look like it's been touched insulation-wise for many decades. The first thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna suck out the old insulation for several reasons, but we wanna see what, what we're dealing with. Where are the places where air may be leaking from the house to the attic? We're gonna figure out where those problems are. Next, we're gonna solve those problems by sealing all those problem areas up so that air can't flow through, and then we're gonna add more insulation. The build show today, Insulation 2.0. Let's get going. I brought my building science buddy, Ken Allison, in with me. Nice to see Ken, you. Ken, thanks for coming, dude. So Ken actually works for an insulation, distribu uh, insulation distributor, IDI, huge coverage all over the nation. But what I like about Ken is he doesn't have a dog in the fight. He sells all kinds of insulation and he helps train performance contractors, insulators, that sort of thing. So what we're gonna do today is set up the lower door, talk about the, how you use an infrared camera and a few other tests to really see how this performs. Again, this is our real remodels house. We kind of already know what's happening here, but we wanted to show you some of the tools in a more in-depth way to show you how this could happen at your house to really get an assessment uh, for energy use, for air flows, for comfort, for durability, all those things. So Ken, what's the first step in this process? The first step we're gonna do is one, verify the blower door number. Really the first step was actually already done. We lowered the temperature of the house down. That's right, we want a delta between the inside and the outside. Yes. And we're looking for at least 20 degrees or so if possible. 20 degrees is optimum, 15 we can kind of work with. We just need to draw that warmer air or colder air yep. from outside across the building materials. We could walk around the house with an infrared camera. We're not gonna see much other than solar shading. Yeah. We turn the blower door on and start drawing outside air over the building materials. We'll be able to see where those materials change temperature. And I think you're gonna find it pretty interesting some of the places we find it. All right, so uh, if you watched our previous build show where we're here, we ran the blower door with Sean on this house and we know it's pretty leaky. We're actually at 27 ACH50 on this That's... house. We got some serious holes here. But Ken's gonna show us how to use this fan actually at a, at a lower speed to kind of make that pressure differential known so we can see with the IR. So, so uh, you ready to get started, Ken? I am, and I'd also like to say we're probably gonna see how big the hole in the house is. We're right. gonna turn it into a leakage area. Let's get started on the RetroTech, let's go. Beautiful. All right, guys, we are heading into the master bedroom, and Ken's got his FLIR, which model is that? This is a FLIR 1 Pro. FLIR 1 Pro plugs right into the side of his iPad. So what we're doing now is we still have the blower door going. We're at 10 pascals. We've got a little pressure differential between inside and out. Let's see if we can find any issues. 
But first, Ken, show us how sensitive that device is. This device is pretty cool. If you watch, I'm going to touch the wall right here. Right. That'll give us an idea not right of how recording. sensitive okay. it is. Check that out. Man, that's so cool. And we're screen recording too, Ken, so we can capture that. That's awesome. So if right, we so look at this, now what we're going to do, I'd like to look at the base of the walls, yep. the outlets, ceiling, fans, you know, your HVAC system, yep. stuff like that. Got it. We're just looking for where we find problems, especially in the wall and the ceiling. Got it. So let me tell these guys what kind of construction we're looking at. Slab on grade. So these floors are going to be, you know, connected to the ground. Two by four exterior walls, single pane aluminum, 70s windows. The attic up here is insulated on the flat above us, and this is a single story section. So with that in mind, let's see what we got, Ken. You ready? Perfect. Let's take a look. We'll start where we started. This is an interior wall. Yep. So as I get to the exterior, we should see a little bit of a temperature change. Oh, yeah. We can see a little bit. We can now there's your 70s this. window. Yeah, big time. Wow. Let's, let's take look a look above it, is. though. <laughs> look at that ceiling plane, Ken. Well, you oh got a window on your God. ceiling. Look at that. It's as much leakage as the window, basically. There's so there, much heat coming in. That's there. a lot of heat flow coming through. And as that's we look at it, you know, there's not a lot there as far as the outlet that outlet's goes. That outlet's not bad though. No, no. that outlet's well good. Oh, we're seeing studs. What is going on with your wall? We're missing some insulation for sure. Yeah, we've wall. got some issues there. Let's let's go back this way and let's take a look at your ceiling again. So if we look at the ceiling. Obviously, that outer perimeter has a real issue. Oh, wow. Look at right here. You these can see studs. Each one of those. That's your rafters yes. up there. But notice how you've got a leakage point right here. Yep. So what let's go that, around. What about that uh, ceiling fan? What's that showing? Oh, <laughs> let me get to the side of one of those fan blades. Look at that, man. <laughs> Look how hot the base of that is. That and that fan is, is not on. That's not like that's the uh, electrical making that. No. That's airflow from the attic into the house. Coming right through the fixture. Now this fixture, if we were looking at that, that could be a can light, yeah. that could be anything. Yeah. But the way we're going to address those is differently. Yep. Yeah. Now how would we seal that one in particular, right? We've got a plastic J box up there. Uh, there's really no fire issues around that. How would you seal that? Or what's We're your just going to take gun foam to it. Instead okay. of the straw foam that you get yep. from Home Depot and stuff, yep. you can get canned foam that goes on a gun. Yep. We're going to gun foam around that, seal the penetration, and just go forward. Gotcha. If it was an older can light, we'd be concerned about that transformer. Yep. We don't really want uh, paper insulation or foam insulation going right up against that transformer. Yeah. The transformers can cause it to overheat. And they make insulation hats that you can put on top of other they do. cans to air seal those in particular. I'll put a link in the description for some of those. Um, but let's also talk about interiors. So like for instance over here we've got an electrical outlet that electrician, when he installed that outlet, drilled through the top plate right here. Yes. And that top plate's right in the attic. And in this vintage house, I guarantee it's not sealed in any way, shape, or form. So if we were to go up in the attic, we could seal that, and now we would not have airflow through this wall cavity. Because you can probably feel a little bit of air. In fact, I can feel a little bit of airflow through that outlet right there. And really, we want to seal the head of every single wall. Yep. So yes, we want to seal that penetration, but also the entire top of every interior wall. Today's codes have changed. Now today we have to put a top plate gasket in on new construction. Yeah. We're trying to seal that drywall to the stud. Yeah. Well, we never did that back it's not then. Not happening back then. Exactly. Let's go see what else we can find, Ken. Perfect. Let's go look in the bathroom. All right. So master bath now. Let's see what this wall connection or ceiling connection looks like in here, Ken. Takes a second. Oh. Look at, that. Yeah, look at that. This is common for most soffits. You're yeah. going to notice yeah. that most soffits have a lot of leakage wow. in them. It is super hot up there. And then how about these ceiling penetrations in the As we uh, go in here. Shower. Oh my gosh. Wow. Look how hot that is. Notice at first we saw Dang. how hot the ceiling was. Yeah. But when you look at that bath fan. So that's an exhaust fan in the bathroom. And look exactly. how stinking hot that is. How often we go into old homes that the exhaust fan is not connected to the pipe. Yep. And also the dampers on many of these old ones don't work. Yeah. And You're, most likely there's no insulation on top of that box either. True. So it's probably the same temperature as the attic. In this case, 130, I bet. 
and a couple of changes. Our new bath fans, the stuff that we have, the flaps close real well, and also today, you're not allowed to connect the pipe with a screw. They used to connect them with a screw, mm -hmm. and sometimes they'd screw that damper open. Oh yeah, I believe So that. we might be looking at something like that. Let's look at, take a look at this. You were talking about that wall. Yeah, look how hot the top of that wall We is. need to seal the entire top yep. of that wall when we get up in there. That's a perfect example. And I know you can't see this in here, but it's, it's all the way down above, your, way above your tub. Yeah, all those walls need sealed at the uh, attic line from the top to the top plate where the drywall is coming in. You're gonna to wanna to seal all those. Absolutely. You wanna look at some other uh, areas of the house or is it time to- I'd uh, love to check out the kitchen. Let's go check out the kitchen. All right, Ken, now let's take a look at the family room. We've got a vaulted ceiling here. These are scissor trusses. Let's see what we've got going on with the uh, ceiling plane. All right, so. Oh man, look at that outside wall right there. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. That one's got some issues. Those knee walls are always terrible when it comes to insulation. They're they always are. poorly done. I think they just kind of missed that. It end. looks to me like that bay is totally missing right there. So as we look, you know, ceiling doesn't look bad. Ceiling doesn't bad right yeah, here. It looks pretty darn yeah. good. Not terrible. Oh, wait Ooh. a minute. Why are we yeah, seeing every we got rafter so badly? Pretty tough thermal bridging there. Oh my gosh. We definitely have a big change on that side of the house. That is absolutely radiating the heat into this room, isn't it? Wow. Dang. And look at that heat just coming down the stairs as well. Yeah, Obviously the upstairs down. got a lot of issues. But uh, boy, this whole end. Look at that cathedral down there. Dang, Ken. This oh. is really. Yeah, you, you've got some fixing to do, as yeah, we, my grandpa would say. We got some work to do in this house. <laughs> All right, well, there's more that we could look at. You know, we saw earlier with Sean that the water heater was pouring heat in, the upstairs ceilings pouring heat in. Actually, before we cut this, let's go upstairs. I want to I want to look at the upstairs real quick too. Cool. All right, Ken, let's go see what we see upstairs here. So we, the air conditioner is not currently working upstairs. Less of a uh, differential in temperature, but let's scan these walls right here. Yeah, first. It's going to be a challenge to see something. Whatever we see is going to have to be pretty bad in order to capture it. Yeah, but you're seeing that same. We're having those leaks up at the ceiling line. We are. Oh my gosh, look at that. We're missing some insulation in those walls right there. Yeah, that, fact, that area was, there is really. I was up there with Sean before. Some... Those bats had fallen down into the attic. And I, I'd be willing to bet that's been like that for 20 years. Missing insulation in these walls right here. That would make this one of the more uncomfortable rooms. For sure. And these knee walls are just missing insulation, super, super hot. Now, ceiling line is going to be hard to tell, but my guess is anywhere you see a fan, yep. uh, you're going to see some massive infiltration. Anywhere you see these uh, registers in the ceiling, you're going to have massive. Um, well, we got one between the registers. Take a look at this. Your ceiling. Oh, yeah. That ceiling plane super hot right there. All right, so Ken, upstairs here, we've got a, a traditional upflow unit. The return's on the bottom. The unit's gonna be in a closet, but check this out. We've got a direct connection to the attic. There's no air ceiling whatsoever happening up there. And as a result, tons of mold around the sheetrock in this closet, and especially around the cabinet, the ductboard. I bet when we do some demo in here, we're gonna find some serious blackness on this house. And then the scuttle hole into the attic is over here. Let's see if you can get a bead on that. Let's see how hot that thing is. Oh yeah, look at that. Nice. Definitely not, a good spot for heat. Oh, you know, on this, whenever we're training contractors, Matt, we really want an insulated hatch cover, something yeah. that you yeah. can tension down or pull down tight, yeah. get that seal around it. You think of appliances. Mm -hmm. When appliances changed was when we put the magnetic seal and the vacuum on. Yep. Then all of a sudden we could go from five inches of insulation down to one, yep. and the compressors got smaller. We mm -hmm. used less energy, but our food stayed better. That's right. All we got to do is close these big holes, take care of the small ones, replace what's up there. You know, the thing about missing insulation, let's take a look at a website because when you've got, if this was a thousand square foot attic, mm -hmm. if we're missing 85 square feet of insulation, that means all we've got is pretty much, you know, 85 square foot at R1, that's mm -hmm. the drywall. Yep. If the rest of that attic is R30, I believe what we're going to see when we check the website is that would drop that whole attic from R30 down to an R9. Wow. Let's take a look at the website 
and give the people an idea how to use it. We'll link that in the description below for sure. Ken, next up on this job, um, this is actually a project that I'm working on and we're gonna be changing the way the insulation works on this house. But I wanna show people if you are gonna upgrade this in a more traditional or more you know, cost-effective manner than I am where I'm really going all out, how we could do that. So let's bring your crew in that's gonna do some suck out and let's show people how we can change the air sealing at the attic line. Let's do that. Let's talk a little bit about safety. There's some unique vacuums out there that seem to work really well. Cause yep. who knows what's up there? Yep. You know, the electricians throw off those metal pieces from yep. the old boxes yep. and things. There's nails and stuff like that. Absolutely. We'll get the vacuum set up. We'll talk a little bit about it and let's get some of this stuff out of here. So right, we man. can look at air sealing. Let's do it. I like it. Guys, I'm here with Steven, one of the owners of True R Value Insulation. Steven, you and the crew did an amazing job today. It is a hot, sweaty job to get up there in the attic, is it not? It is not a fun job. No, it's not. <laughs> All right, so as we talk about this uh, air sealing the attic and then re-insulating, first let's talk about, uh, I want to hear from your perspective, why is it important to remove all that insulation? Well, uh, the most important thing is that it allows us to air seal. Yep. So we get out that old crappy insulation that's full of pollen, dust, mm -hmm. crystallized rat feces, all of that stuff that we're breathing. Yep. We're able to get that out. Now your home's not dealing with that poor indoor air quality. And we, we expose the, the big, problems. yeah, the, the, big pro the big holes of the house, yeah. which are the attic floors. And tell me, uh, we saw some of them already, but give me a list of a few of the bigger holes that you see. After so you the, that the, the big holes that we see are top plates. So the mm -hmm. top of walls within the house, uh, the can lights, the HVAC boots, mm -hmm. um, and then there are always random drill holes for electrical piping, all that that they, may have used or they may have not have used there's yeah. a, and then there's open chases so yep. these are voids within walls yep. that just have no sheetrock above it and those are allowing heat humidity just flow into that yeah we saw a couple up there where you had a b vent from the water heater coming through and you could shine your flashlight in and see all the way down yeah. you know yes. 20 uh, feet yes. into the house and and you may not have known that that's there with the insulation like yeah. a bigger one yeah but there's smaller ones that we always find and yeah. we're able to seal those up all right guys we talked about why it's important to air seal but i want to give you a visual demonstration now this house that we're at here slab on grade construction we've got roof trusses traditional insulation on the flat upstairs, and I've designed a little bit of a test on how to do that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the blower door fan on low, and then I've got a fog machine upstairs. So Ken, go ahead and hit that fan for me if you would. Now we're not doing it super high, and that fan is blowing in this time, so we're pressurizing the house, almost as if you had a balloon that you were <laughs> blowing into the balloon, and we're looking for how many cracks and leaks there are. Steven's got a fog machine going here for us. Give us one quick hit on that, Steven, so we can see what that looks like. <laughs> and then all these penetrations in the ceiling here, like this fan, uh, the bath fan, all these other outlets, these are probably pretty air leaky. Now we've already done the insulation suck out upstairs. Steven and his crew finished that. Good work, by the way. And so now we're gonna see if with this fog machine going, the house being positively pressurized, if we can go up into the attic and actually see some of that fog coming through. So come join me up here. We're gonna climb up the attic hatch and see, pardon me, if we can uh, find some of that smoke coming through. All right, so we're up in the attic now and those guys with that ceiling fan and the fog machine are right here. So hopefully we're gonna see that fog coming through this hole right there. There we go, that's perfect. So that's the box. All right, Steven, crank up the machine. Oh my gosh, you can see it, yeah. Can you see that fog, y'all? Rising up. Did my flashlight help? Yeah, oh my gosh, look at that coming through. Oh yeah, tons of fog coming through. That's crazy. Now we're positively pressurizing the house which would be similar to the stack effect in the wintertime. And you can see visually how much smoke is coming out of there. 
All right, guys, let's move over to the bath fan. Wow. Check that out. Super leaky. That's a massive source of air leaks. Now, what's, what else is going to leak air? Let's see if we can see one. See that 2x4 right there? That's the top plate uh, for the bedroom. And there's another one over there that separates the bedroom from that upstairs family room space. If we really fogged that first floor, we'd be seeing air coming um, through that top plate, especially where there's wire penetrations. But let's look over here at this bath fan next. See if we can see some light coming through there. All right, now I'm not sure what this, uh, what these wires were doing here. This looks like this might have been an ad. Oh, I hear the fog machine going over there by the uh, bath fan. Oh yeah, I can see it coming. Around. Can you see all the light? If I turn my flashlight off, see all the light coming around the sides of that drywall? Super leaky. And also look at the flap right there. Can you see the flap moving? The, f the uh, backdraft damper is not working very well and there's tons of fog coming through there. It's gonna get all foggy in here. We're not gonna be able to see very well in a minute. It's gonna be super foggy in here. But can you see the backdraft damper just leaking? Now this bath fan was not connected to anything. They just had it blowing into the attic. But if I take my flashlight off for a second, see all the light coming around there? Anywhere we can see light means that there's massive air leaking going on. And this right here too, where that was, massive air leaking. And then uh, right behind you here too, if you can turn around, look at this, where this um, B vent was coming through. This is probably for the water heater on the first floor coming up all the way through the house. Look at that big hole right there. That's connected all the way down through the house where the water heater is. There's a massive air leak and actually I can feel the air pouring through there right now. So there's no fog. If we were to fog in the laundry room, you'd see that fog coming right through there, coming all the way up through the house. The point is insulation 2.0. It's not just about insulation. Air sealing is super, super important. And I get pushback all the time on my YouTube channel. Matt, your building house is too tight. No, we need to build houses tight. In order for our insulation to work effectively, it must be airtight. This is that Gore-Tex jacket for your house. We're air sealing the house. And then if these things are all fully air sealed, then we can insulate and the insulation is going to have a true R value. That's what I love about the company name of these guys. True R value. That's really, it's a quick statement, but if you think about it, it's so true. All right, now we're going to show you how to air seal this attic now. We're going to do it with two different ways. We're going to use it with uh, some canned foam and we're going to do it with some two tank closed cell foam. So let's grab the guys. All right, y'all, we're up in the attic. It is hot up here, so we're going to be as quick as we can. What we're looking at is the underside of the drywall. All the insulation sucked out, so now we can really see what the problem areas are. And here's one right here. We've got a top of wall transition here. So where the drywall is butting that top plate, that's a big source of air leaks. And look at those uh, wires coming through that top plate. And where that wire goes through is an opportunity for air to leak right out of there. Now Ken's got his foam kit and we're going to show you the kind of easiest, quickest method, also the most expensive method. All right, Ken, go for it, brother. Now Ken prepped this kit and got this ready ahead of time. There's a little bit of a process to getting it prepped, but as you can see, once you prep it, it goes really quick. He's using that closed cell foam at those wall intersections, anywhere there's drywall butting up against there, he's laying down a nice thick bead. Now this, this is closed cell foam insulation, but we're not using it for insulation purposes here. We're using this for air sealing. Now, another big source of air leaks is recessed cans. Actually, we don't have any recessed cans in this particular house because we're in the upstairs where the bedrooms are. But we do have a bunch of ceiling boxes, which is basically a junction box for where you've got uh, ceiling fans, um, some of the uh, fixtures that are mounted to the ceiling. We're going to seal those with this foam as well. Looking good, Ken. Keep it up, brother. Once you transition and get this J-Box over here while we're here, I'll hold that light for you. Oh yeah, look at that big old air leak right there. He's got his walk board up here, which makes it easier. Oh yeah, look at that. Nice job. 
you'll notice that foam is expanding in place. It's pretty hot and humid up here, so it's gonna, it's gonna have no problem curing. But if we were in Arizona or a really arid climate, we'd have to do something about that. Okay guys, so next up, some more wall to uh, drywall transitions we're sealing here. And then we're gonna show you how to do this with a foam gun. The guys at True R Value are gonna do it with some uh, metal foamed guns in just a second here. But look at that foam bead right there. That looks really good. Good job, Ken. You can see how easy it, it is with a kit. And you can see how difficult this would be if any of that insulation was in the way. The other thing that uh, I want you to notice while we're in this spot, let me shine the light down this way. Look at the end of that rafter bay. See how there's no baffles at the end of that rafter bay? We need to see there's insulation that kind of fell into the uh, soffit down there. We're gonna have to install some baffles down there so we can stop the insulation from falling into the baffles when this attic gets reblown. But that's, that's the basics, guys. We've got one other big uh, kind of wart up in the attic here that I'm not gonna spend a bunch of time on in this particular video. That's the HVAC system that has some uh, transitions from the downstairs to the up. Uh, that really needs to be sealed in this house. But uh, in actuality, this is my real remodel. You can check out my series on the uh, link in the description. And we're gonna change out the HVAC. So we're not gonna mess with that because that's gonna get changed out. Now let's switch to the true R value, guys, and we're gonna show you how to do it. Uh, Quincy's gonna show us how to do it with a foam gun. All right, now Quincy's got a foam gun, which is gonna be a less costly way to do it because those foam kits are pretty pricey. You gotta be a little uh, more of a ninja when you use the foam gun, but look how Quincy's done this a lot. And that's a pretty big hole that he's filling. And again, he's filling with low expansion foam here. You could use high expansion foam, but this low expansion foam is gonna be a little bit more detail oriented and now he's going to do the same thing he's going to be doing those wall transitions go ahead and hit that wall right there Quincy where the top plate is hitting the drywall and then he's got some uh, wires coming through there too that he's going to hit and you can see it's pretty similar process doing this to uh, the foam kit it's just a little slower got to be a little more detail oriented uh, He's really precise with his gun, and he's done this a bunch, so he kind of knows what he's doing. But if you are an amateur trying to do this on your own house, I would definitely recommend the kit. It's going to be a lot more expensive to do, but you're going to get a much better seal than uh, if you were trying to do it with the gun. If you're a pro watching this, the gun's going to be the less expensive way to do it. But this is, this is really important to this insulation 2.0 because now we're sealing up all those air leaks between the house in this attic space and now when they come back and re-blow the space that insulation is going to give its true r value now again we're not actually doing the entire attic on this job because it's actually from my real remodel job uh, and so we have a little ways to go on this project in particular before we actually uh, get to the insulation phase but in this video we wanted to show you what to do and how to do it on your house so that you get the basics Guys, for more information on this process, make sure you check out IDI's website. I'll put a link in the description below. There's some good building science training on this process in several locations on the web. All right, Quincy, that looks great, man. Once you do that last top plate, then we'll get out of the attic here. All right, y'all, I'm sure glad to get out of that attic. It was hot up there. Now, Ken, uh, we did our air sealing up there, but I wanted to ask you, since you're an insulation distributor, What's, what are the reasons in your mind that someone would want to suck all that old insulation out before doing that air sealing? Because technically someone could probably what, rake around their insulation, find all those problems and seal them and rake it back, right? You could, and there are people that do that. One of the issues is though, your installers are probably going to charge you almost as much to do that as they would to vac it out. Yeah. And a big reason for that, I've got some of the stuff up from upstairs and I'm not gonna ask you to grab this, but, <laughs> but this, you'll notice the fibers are very large. That's and the old insulation. It is, and this is what's called a phenolic binder. Okay. That binder pretty much makes everybody itch. I'm not gonna do what I'm about to do with this, but this, it's gritty, it's already you know, kind of bothering my hands. Yep. The newer insulations, this type of stuff, and it isn't just the Owens Corning, it's any of these newer insulations, these are going to have much smaller fibers, so they break up better, they have better coverage, but not only that, 
the binder is a natural Actually, binder. Actually rubbing that in on other your words, skin. It's like sugar. If you walk into our warehouse when we first get a brand new truck, it uh -huh. smells like fresh baked cookies or caramel corn. Really? That might tell you what the binder is, but I'm supposed to say it's natural. Interesting. So uh, this will break up better. Huh. It doesn't have the itch properties, and it just seems to work a lot better than the old stuff. It doesn't lay down like the larger fibers did. Let's blow some insulation, Ken. You ready? Ready. Let's do it. Now tell me about how the blower door works uh, and what people could, what how the blower door is used with this process. Okay, uh, first of all, we will use the blower door and uh, it's what I like to refer to as kind of doing the blood pressure of the house. Ah. So I do the blower door, I see how leaky the house is. Are uh -huh. you normal? You know, maybe it's good. We're surprised sometimes. And yeah. then we see really bad, you know, hey, we need to take you to the hospital right yeah. now. So yeah. situations. Uh, and then we use that number. And when we test in, we have a number to reference when we test out. So test after in the, meaning pretest, yes, right? Before yes. you've done any work, mm -hmm. we test yeah. it when yes. you arrive, see mm -hmm. what our blower door score is, see how leaky the house is. And then later, what do you find often that you can do in terms of tightening the house up in terms of percentage or numbers? Yeah. Uh, uh, we see every time at least 40%. Wow. So we've seen up to 60% and we get really excited at that one. Wow, so maybe a house that had a 10 ACH 50, which means a pretty darn leaky house, mm. You may be able to take that down to a five ACH yes, 50? Yes, and, and a five is modern codes for a new construction. In Austin, in Texas. In Austin, Texas, uh, has to pass with a five ACH. Man, so, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So Good we, stuff. Yeah, we're, we're happy when we see that, yeah. So, Stephen, um, some people watching this may be thinking, I want to foam my attic so that uh, I've got the best possible, um, you know, my ducts and my air conditioned space and then maybe I even leave my insulation. What would you say to somebody who's thinking about foaming their attic? Uh, foam is the best product that we have available to air seal and insulate an attic. Mm -hmm. Yes, Meaning the foam up to the yeah, roof line. Yeah, and they're, they're exactly right. And when uh, we get a call for that, it's like, yeah, yeah, definitely. We wanna, we wanna help you with that. But 90% of the time we get over there, we look up in their attic and guess what? Just like almost every house in Austin, has their gas furnace up in the attic. Or their water heater yeah, or water whatever. heater, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and those older furnaces are natural draft vents. So right. they use the air within the attic to get the- To the, burn it. The, yeah, the poisonous gases the... out of the combustion <laughs> zone. Yeah, yeah. So, and if we were to foam those attics, those poisonous gases could get trapped into the house. And, and guess what? spill back yeah, into the they, house. They go directly down to where you're sleeping. Yeah, so you find a gas furnace in the attic, mm -hmm. you, you don't want to foam it, guys. Yeah, that's, a, yes. that's a huge mistake. Yeah, and, and, and also foam is not inexpensive, right? I mean, we're mm -hmm. talking about a pretty expensive system and your process here, which I'm calling insulation 2.0, could be probably half the cost, right? Yeah, it, it's almost always half the cost. And my guess is you're going to get maybe 70, 80 percent of the benefit. Yeah, the the only thing that we're not benefiting is that the ducts and the AC equipment is within conditioned space, right. and that's great. But if we're doing a good job on the air sealing and the the insulation, that's less effective on the house. Yeah, we're getting the low hanging fruit, so yes. to speak, yeah. and taking care of those mm -hmm. big problems yeah. first. All right, now let's talk cost. Everybody wants to know how much does this cost? Give us a range uh, for two things. First of all, I haven't even mentioned this, but you guys do um, home performance assessments yep. as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're the local ECAD specialist. So what does it cost to do a, a home performance assessment? And then this insulation 2.0 we're talking about, where we're vacuuming now, we're air sealing, we're putting new insulation back. Tell me the price range for both those. Uh, in, in today's market, there's, uh always offers a free energy audit. Yeah. Uh, I, I try to uh, steer people away from those. Yeah. You get uh, what you pay for yeah, when it comes yeah, that, to an audit. That's typically a sales <laughs> guy who has a particular product that he wants to sell you. Yeah. So he's coming in. Uh, any energy audit or home assessment, you want someone who's actually going to pull tools and testing equipment into the house yeah, that's right. and do get you some scientific numbers. Yeah, so uh, uh, we, we see in Austin about it's 250 on the low end. 
upwards of how much you want tested. How yeah. bad the house and is. And how big how the big, house is, right? Yeah. But how at many a minimum, AC we're talking to 250 yeah. bucks, mm -hmm. but probably you're gonna spend several hundred, yes. if not a thousand, two thousand bucks for a yeah. good home mm -hmm. performance audit. Yeah. Now, how about this insulation 2.0? We did like 900 square feet or so in that secondary attic. What would that run someone, uh, you know, I know we're talking to a nationwide audience here, but can you give us a broad strokes what that would cost? Uh, nationwide, it's four to six dollars. Okay, so, per square yeah. foot. Mm -hmm. And that's gonna get you the suck out, uh, all the air sealing yeah. that we're talking about, and then a reblow with the baffles and the whole shebang. Yeah, yeah, so everything that's required by code, um, uh, uh, the, all three of those services, and, and the testing. Yeah. So typically that covers all of it. Gotcha, so, mm -hmm. good stuff. Now, what I like about this, guys, just to wrap up, is you know we see a lot of promises on energy savings. I saw an ad for uh, some window replacements the other day for a, a cheap vinyl window. Oh, 40% off your energy bill by changing your windows. No, that is not, there's no way by changing your windows and doing nothing else, you're gonna save 40% of your energy bills. On the other hand, if we did an installation 2.0, I think 40% is probably pretty realistic, isn't it? Yeah, it's realistic. Uh, I avoid selling based on uh, percentages, yeah, and percentages promises and, that you yeah. can keep. Energy efficiency for me is a symptom yep. of a bigger problem. Right, if, right. if you're worried about the energy efficiency or your bills are really high, there's something else going on with the house. And yeah. that's usually air leakage and yeah. low insulation, yeah. possibly bad HVAC work. And a lot of times my guess is you get called because people are, have a bedroom that's really yeah. uncomfortable and really hot, weird smells. Why does it smell really bad in here? <laughs> and it's because your attic has rats in it and they got exterminated, but all that junk is up in your attic and whatever's in your attic is probably in your house, right? Yeah, uh, I always, have that as a question in my home assessments and people look at me funny, but it's really important for me. It's an, again, another symptom. I know yeah. there's a problem if there's weird smells. Yeah, yeah but uh, so yeah, uncomfortable rooms, weird smells, uh, all, all of those are, and then uh, indoor air quality issues. So mm -hmm. maybe kids with asthma, allergies, things yep. like that, this is a great option. It's gonna make a huge difference for mm -hmm. them. Yep. Steven, great job, brother. All I right, really yeah. appreciate it. Guys, you can get a hold of him at truerrvalue.com. They're a local Austin contractor. But if you're nationwide, there's other guys like Steven throughout the uh, US, and really throughout the world, that are doing this kind of work. But you need to know what to ask for, and you also need to know to pay for it, right? Because if you just call an insulation guy to reblow your attic, you're not gonna get those benefits. Going back to that original analogy of the skier going down the hill, just adding another sweater is not gonna do it. We need to do that air sealing. It's vitally, vitally important. Guys, big thanks to Steven and his crew. They absolutely killed it out here. And full disclosure, they did the suck out for free, right? So I, wanted, <laughs> I want you to know that uh, he did give me a free suck out uh, of the attic on this, and I really appreciate that. Um, but I thought it was really important to, sh to use this house that I've been doing a remodel on to talk about this because we talk about air sealing all the time and I always get pushed back in the comments about how I'm sealing my houses too tightly and I gotta say no, that is not right. We need to seal our houses better and yes. do a better job and this house is a great example. This homeowner is living here for decades in a terribly uncomfortable house with huge energy bills and massive problems that were covered up with a six inch or four inch layer of insulation they couldn't see. So being able to expose that and show it was vital. Anyways, if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button below, guys. We talk about all kinds of stuff on this channel, building science, indoor air quality, how to do it right, best practices and products, of course. Hit that subscribe button below. Tuesday and Fridays are new videos. Otherwise, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. We'll see you next time on The Build Show.